Hey right, guys, I'm back with another video. So, uh, somebody I know had asked me to do a video on this head turning. And I'm not going to do the foot walking and rotation on this one. I'm just going to do the uh, head turning itself, so that the camera, uh, the character will follow the camera with his head. So, let's get started. This is one I am going to have to break down into sections because. It's somewhat of a complex system, so I'm not going to do it all in one video because it would be over an hour long. So let's get started. First off, we're going to uh, start a new project. So go ahead and uh, create a uh, go to games, uh, go to third person. We're just going to name this something. I'm going to call it A1. Directional something so that I can easily find it when I need to. It'll be right here. So you're gonna want to start a you're gonna want to create an advanced locomotion system project. I've already got one open here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to add import, go to add features, go to third person and just add to project. That'll give you the mannequin, third person, and third person VP. What you're going to do is you're going to go to the mannequin, go to the character, go to the mesh, open up the skeleton, select humanoid right here under retarget manager. If you don't have it, go to window and retarget manager. So go to select humanoid rig, just press auto map and save. Then you're going to go to the advanced locomotion folder, the character assets folder mannequin skeleton and open up the OS mannequin skeleton you're going to select humanoid rig and auto map and save then you're going to go to the animation examples aim offsets and you're going to select all of these and you're going to retarget anim assets duplicate you're going to select that skeleton you're going to go to change go to mannequin animations I placed mine under ALS and AM aim offset. Uh, you can also right click and add a new folder in there if you if you need to do it that way and then retarget and it'll retarget these over here to your mannequin animations ALS aim offset. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna exit out of the project we just made. We're going to right click on these and we're going to do uh, we're going to go to action, asset actions, go to migrate, save selected, just press OK, and then go to the folder where you created your project, and go to under the content folder, and then select folder. It'll ask if you want to override it, say yes to all, and now you can exit out of this. And then open up this folder. Now press this button here. This will open up your tree. We're first going to go into the third person BP and blueprints. Your animations will be under mannequin animations, ALS, aim offset if you did it the way I did it. Under the third person BP blueprints folder, we're going to go under blueprints. We're going to create a blueprint interface. We're going to call it BP underscore char info. That's what I'm going to name. That's what I'm going to name it. Right click again. Go to blueprints. Go to enumerators. We're going to call this rotation mode. This enumerator part isn't really necessary but I'm going to cover it anyway so an enumerator inside of Unreal is just like a variable type that you're creating uh, where the variable types have names so it'll be it'll kind of be like an array filled with these names and that just allows you to, to easily move like from one state to another so if you're in a running state or a swimming state you know or whatever this is kind of the system you would use so for the velocity, uh, I mean for the enumerator names, we're going to call the first one velocity 
direction. We're going to make another one. We're going to call it look, looking direction. And we're going to create one more and we're going to create, call it aiming. This is the way they do it. So velocity direction is basically when you want to look around your cam uh, your character without it responding to you. That's what they use it for in ALS. Uh, so I just put it in there just for brevity. So the looking direction is when you're actually just looking around your character. The aiming is when you're aiming down the sights by like for example holding down the right mouse button. So after we've done that we're going to save it. We're going to exit it. We're going to open up the blueprint interface. So the blueprint interface interfaces are used for communicating between uh, blueprints. Um, for the, the way we're using it is we're, we want the animation blueprint to be universal so it can be used across multiple characters. So in this case what we would what we would do for example uh, the ALS what they do is they have a master class and that master class inherits this uh, interface and so does all of its children. So in the master class uh, character blueprint what they do is they pass in the variables uh, through this function and inside the animation blueprint we can just get a uh, we can just call a character we can cast we can get the player uh, pawn and we can cast it to a character which is just a general character class which every all these characters will belong to and from there we can call this blueprint interface without having to specifically cast to the base class and what that allows us to do is it allows us to just whatever character is running on that animation blueprint it'll get uh, it'll call that interface function from that that specific character and it will get those values from that character and that's what we're going to do here so for the first function what we're going to do is we're going to call this uh, essential values and for the next one we're going to call it rotation modes and then for the output on the rotation modes because we only need an output because we're we're getting data from the character and we want to be able to save that data from our animation blueprint so we're using the output so for this we're just going to call it rotation mode and as the variable type we're going to just type in rotation modes and that'll or rotation mode and that'll give us our numerator so we're going to select that that's going to be the type and as you can see it holds our values that we set so under essential values we're just going to make three outputs the first one's going to be a vector the second one's going to be a boolean and the third one is going to be a rotator so for the first one it's going to be called movement input for the next one it's going to be called has movement input and for the final one we're going to call it aiming rotation we're going to compile that and save it and everything will be more clear to you after this so now that we've we've gotten that set up we're going to go into the third person character blueprint we're going to we're going to go to character settings let me actually min, uh, maximize this so af uh, after you select class settings not character settings class settings you're going to come over here to the interfaces over here under details if you don't see it go to windows details uh, under interfaces go to add and look for a bp char info or just search for it and that'll add that interface we're going to compile that and save it we're going to go over here to this interfaces that I added to our blueprint we're going to select the drop down and double click on rotation mode or rotation modes we're going to right click on this pin and we're going to promote it to a variable I'm just going to leave it 
labeled as rotation mode. Under essential values, we're going to promote, well, we don't need to promote that. Uh, for the movement input, we're going to get the current acceler acceleration. And this returns the current acceleration computed from input vector each update. So when it gets to this, it'll get the actual current acceleration of the character. This is returned as a directional vector, so it gives us the direction in the speed, or acceleration, I should say, of uh, the character. And we're going to plug this in over here. And now to get to find out if this is greater than zero, we need uh, to get the length of this vector. And what that'll do is it'll transform it from a directional vector into a solid value that we can use to find out what the actual speed is. So we're going to type in vector length. And if that is greater than, that gives us a float. If that is greater than zero, then we have movement. Now for the aiming rotation, what we need to do is we need to get the control rotation. And what that will give us is that will give us the actual rotation of our uh, viewport Uh, it, it'll give us the view rotation of this pawn. So we plug that in there and I'll go ahead and show you what that, that is. So this right here, the angle of my rotation as I'm rotating around the character, that's what it's going to return. So we can't actually get the camera uh, rotation because that won't be uh, an angle and it won't be the proper uh, rotation that we're looking for. We want the aiming rotation and this is what will we'll give it to us. We'll give that to us. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this here and uh, I'll see you in the next video.